Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian and I am application engineer here at Rode & Schwartz. Today I want to show you how to test a direction finding device with radar signals from a moving emitter. Therefore we have a setup consisting of two SMW200A, each with two RF ports. We have a SMA100MB which serves as a low source which is fed into the IQ modulator of each of the paths. We aligned this setup in terms of amplitude, group delay and phase. The procedure is shown in another video. In this video we want to provide test signals to a 4-port DUT. In our case, a ZMP20 vector network analyzer serves as DUT. We configure the scenario with the Rode & Schwartz Pulse Sequencer software, which can be downloaded from our homepage. After starting the software, we add a new repository. First thing is to clean the repository. That means we remove the Generator1 profile, which is added by default. Next step is to configure our signal generators. So we go to the Signal Generator Configuration dialog and create profiles for each of the SMWs, which were already added. We also have to define the configuration here. We use a common trigger and LO coupling, and one SMW has to act as master, and the other one has to act as slave. Next step is to configure the scenario we start by creating a new pulse. Let's define a signal duration of 10 microseconds. And to keep the repository clear, we change the name of the pulse to, let's say, pulse 10 microseconds. Next, we create a new sequence and insert the pulse into the sequence. Let's set the PRI to 20 microseconds and the number of repetitions to 100. We now need a receiver that has four antennas. Let's say the receiver is connected to an uniform linear array with an antenna spacing of half a wavelength at 10 gigahertz. This corresponds to 1.5 centimeters. We set the coordinates of the antenna elements accordingly. In the 2D overview, we can check our settings. In the next step, we add an emitter that plays the sequence we defined before. Additionally, we have to change the frequency to 10 GHz. For simplicity, both the emitter and the receiver have omnidirectional antennas. Now we define the geometry and the movements in the scenario. Therefore, we add a direction finding scenario and then open the map. The receiver is already placed in the middle of the map, so we just drag and drop the emitter into our scenario. We place it north of the emitter so that the antenna array is perpendicular to the direction of arrival of the emitter signals. The emitter shall not be static but moving around the receiver. We go to its properties and set the movement type to moving and the trajectory to arc. We start at a position 2500 meters north and move in a full circle around the receiver with a speed of 210 meters per second. Then we close the Properties dialog. By clicking the Play button, we see a preview of the scenario. The scenario definition is now complete, so we assign the signals to our 4 RF path. Therefore, we go to our scenario. We assign the signals for antenna 1 and 2 to the master SMW 
and the signals for antenna 3 and 4 to the slave SMW. Then we close the assignment dialog. We change the destination for the signal to the signal generator and then click on calculate. After the calculation is completed, we load everything in the SMWs. Now we only need to switch on the RF ports alignment feature in the master SMW and trigger the simulation. Let me now show you what we expect to see on the DOT. Initially our emitter is located north of the receiver, so it is bore side to the antenna array axis. We expect an initial phase delay between two adjacent antenna elements of zero degrees. This is indicated on the right side. As the emitter moves around the receiver towards the east, the phase difference increases up to 180 degrees when the emitter is in the east. As the emitter moves further south of the receiver, the phase differences decrease back to zero degrees. When moving to the west, the phase differences are minus 80 degrees. Back in the north, we are back to zero degrees. So as the emitter moves around the receiver, the phase describes a sine curve. And this is what we expect on the set and B and what I want to show you now. As you see, all three traces for the adjacent antenna elements are on top of each other and describe a nice sine curve. That's it. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.